Hi, this is Fifi LaRue with a new video for you. <laughs> you know it's me, it's Nancy L.T. Hamilton, and we finally got our act together and have a new video for you. I'm going to start this video with a little sad tale. This morning while I was spackling on my makeup in my ten time magnifying mirror because I can't see anything without my glasses, a shaft of beautiful sunlight came in from the side window and illuminated the fur on my upper lip. Oh, I said, I have a full on mustache. <laughs> oh, joy. Uh, new new adventure in, in aging. It's a surprise every day. Anyway, what does this mean to you? Why do you even care? Um, I, I thought it was a very poor, or but a good enough analogy about today's project. Um, I started out doing one thing and discovered something new. So today uh, we're going to be working with the um, Pepe uh, Superior ring bending tool that I just got and um, I will talk a little more about that in a minute. I just want to show you some of the evolution of the ideas that I got um, while I kept saying to myself this has got to do more than bend thick ring shanks. I don't want a tool that does one thing. So I started playing around for the last couple days. So if you look below you'll see yes we were bending some rings and oh what if we bent some fancy wire and oh what if we made those fancy wire into earrings and oh and let's carry it a little further. <laughs> And then I started bending tubing, thin tubing. And then I bent thick tubing, and that didn't work at all. Um, and then I was working on this piece, and I thought, oh, I bet I could make partial half tubing with this. So I did that. You can also do a ring shank like this with thick wire. And this is what it's best for, is bending heavy, thick stock. This is a serving spoon that I'm making into a hinge bracelet. So, um, anyway, that's, that's what the gist of today's video is going to be. I'm going to show you how to make these two ring, earrings. They're really fast, and they have an interesting, um, simple hooking system, which is just two little um, tubes and a piece of balled up wire. Of course, it won't stay up because it's rude. So, and then this takes about, I don't know, maybe ten minutes to make this pair of earrings. So... We're going to get started now. So the first thing we need to talk about is how the um, Pepe Superior ring bending dingy wingy works. Um, it comes in this set down here. Uh, it doesn't come with these. These are actually these are Delrin. Uh, I don't know pressy thingies. I'm sure they have a f word for them. But there's a a round piece and then a corresponding uh, pushy part and you can see that they fit tightly you know against the sides of it it comes with these two yahoos over here which I really I played with for about two hours and just kind of went well hmm so I don't know if that does anything for me but the round ones definitely are interesting and it also see this little doohickey here this uh, comes off if you want to just bolt this to a piece of wood or to your desktop. You can do that or you put this on and you can use it in a vise like this. And um, you need a uh, some kind of key, chuck key. What's it called? Oh my god. Allen wrench. Okay, so this is Fred by the way. So f um, the to use it with a basic ring uh, making for making basic ring. Um, the sizes are very limited. I found that the number 20 is about a 10, 10 and a half, and then the 16 is a, like a six and a half. So you have to adjust the sizing on it. This is really awesome. It uh, it does most of its best work with really heavy stock, where it's killing you to bend it over a ring mandrel. Um, this is really thin, but it's just for example. So what I've found um, is you got to put the round guy in first because it's really hard to get the pushy guy in after. 
and this uh, theoretically slides right into here. Or did I do it back backwards? Nope, see, I'm gonna do that first. I've put this in here about 10 times. I don't understand why it's not fitting. Looks like I have the wrong one. No. Uh, that might help. Muy stupid mujer. So I'm going to, when I, when I bend a normal ring, I want the shank sitting flat on the bottom here. And then you just pull this handle towards you and work your way around like this. And you can get really fast if you want. The nice thing about doing it with a ring bender like this is that you don't end up with um, one side slightly larger than the other like on a um, on a ring manual because it's graduated so this is a you know per all perpendicular sides so you're you're going to end up with a much cleaner round on it but like in this case usually what I would do on this for a smaller ring is to start with a smaller um, size this this pudding and stuff. Make it smaller and then stretch it out on the ring mandrel. So now it's a teeny teeny ring and I'll just slide it on here to what size I want. Let's say I wanted an eight, nine. Okay, that size fits perfectly. And you'll see this joint is like set up. I'm ready to solder, um, which is really sweet. You know, so if you pre-size your, your thingies, rings, get the right size metal, use a smaller die, shrink it, slide it onto the size you want, you're ready. It takes about two minutes. So it's, it's pretty cool for that. Um, and I haven't found any marring using this steel. Um, the Delrin I did find is great for the tubing, which I will show you. Um, for the, Let's pretend we're making a pair of ear I'm not even going to pick it up. I'm not even lowering myself to pick it up. For this, these earrings here, these little tube earrings, bending tubing can be extremely annoying and extremely difficult. So, I was thrilled when I found out that I could actually do this without um, crushing the tubing. So, but you got to use the Delrun uh, pusher thingy because um, the other one crushes it. So, I just... And I'm, I'm not pounding on this. I'm just gently, really gently pushing around. And you feed with your left hand. And you want to try to keep this stupid thing flat. But then again, with my imperfections, it's muy difícil. I'm just going around. And I'll probably go past the point of uh, where I want to cut it. This, it's just so cool to be able to bend tubing, I can't tell you. I spent like three weeks with one woman emailing back and forth about how to bend tubing and we explored every method. So now we have a little perfect tubing circle. There's a little tiny duva there and I don't know what I did there, why I bent it. Um, this tubing is, there's a limit <coughs> on how far you can go with tubing as far as what tubing size. This is uh, 1.75 and I have done it with, what's this? That's 1.75. See it works with the smaller really well too, the 1.48 or 1.50. Oh my, remember my calipers are off. And I think up the next size uh, from that should work. You can just try it, you know, this is a great scrap project. I always have these little pieces of tubing left, so, um, and wire. So it's a, it's, you know, if you've got this little extra, you can whip a pair of earrings. So at this point, what I'm going to do is, um, get ready to saw this. Um, and I think that's it for the moment and we'll go on to this next. Okay. So what I want is, uh, 10 millimeters between this end uh, and the other end, so I just measured it and marked it. And what I'm going to do now is saw this, get off my bracelet, saw this part right now. And I'm going to use my tubing saw or cutter thing because, um, God, I'm 
just so eloquent. It's amazing. Because it's so much easier trying to saw this tubing flat. It's a pain in the butt. Okay, so I ran the blade through. Of course, I ran it through backwards. I can't see my mark, so I have to turn it over. But we'll get there eventually. I swear to Saw blade belly. Do it right this time. Okay. And I'm just going to set it in the groove and line up my mark with the slot here. Go ahead and cut it. Now this tubing that I'm using just go on the floor. Everything else does. This tubing that I'm using is slightly bigger than the 20 gauge wire that I like to use for ear wires. So I'm going to um, do a little crimping. I have another tubing here that fits perfectly. Telescopes, telescopes, telescopes in perfectly. Um, so you could make these earrings with that or you could do this little, this little scrunchy thing I'm, I'm going to show you. Um, first I want to do one more thing. I want to finish off these ends with a, um, a cupper just to make them party. So I can find my foot pedal and maybe I'll do this. So at the, by the way at this point you want to make the second one of these and use this one as a pattern for the second one to adjust the size. So you have two the same size or you may not want to have two the same size. You might want to be very rad right up there. This one, come in. Just wiggling it around a little bit. Get all the edges. Okay, so now the edges are smooth and they're not going to jag on anything. I can put Mr. Flex Shaft away. So, for the wire, I don't. Uh, I know I brought a cutter over. There we go. I love my power. These Kiga power cutters, Kiega. So I'm not going to measure yet, but this is uh, 20 gauge, and I'm using our Gentium wire because it doesn't. Well, this is tarnished. I don't know why, but I must have dropped something on it. It doesn't. <coughs> excuse me. It doesn't tarnish um, a lot, and it um, balls up beautifully. And it's it's my new wire of choice. So this is loose in here. You can see it's going to fall out. So what I'm going to do is um, put it in here and just gently, slowly crimp around the edge. I think my cat's snoring. Until it's tight in there. <laughs> Unlike that. Back in there, you little dog. Oh my god. She's snoring. So anyway, you just go ahead and crimp it down and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go stick a little piece of solder right here and solder this in um, and we're almost done. Okay, I have fluxed and dropped a pound of solder between the tubing and my wire. And what I'm doing now, I've got a really low flame on here because there's not a lot of metal going on. And I'm heating up the base metal, not the wire, because that's going to go first. If anything's going to melt, it'll be the wire. So now I kind of touch up there once in a while. Remember, the trick is to bring things up to temperature together, both pieces of metal you're joining. So let's see how that wire just wants to f give up. Come on. There we go. It's a little blobby. And turn it. Oh, now you guys can't see it. Surprise! Okay. So my wire is has slumped, but that's not an issue at all for me. And quench and pickle, and then we will. Um, I'll show you how to finish this up. And oh, I put too much solder on that. T 
teeny tiny little bit of solder because it's a teeny tiny little thing. So uh, we'll pickle and I'll see you in a sec. So I know I'm not looking at it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to clean this up, <clears throat> but the wire's in there now. And we want this, the ear wire, to follow the natural curve um, of the piece. So I'm using a, a plier that's got a rounded edge on one side and a square on the other. And I'm just going to shape it a little bit. You can open it up this way. One thing I do want to say about when you're making this hollow tubing earring, you probably should boil it in uh, baking soda because the pickle gets inside here. Um, either that or run a thin stream of water down in here to try to rinse it out thoroughly. So, anyway, and move this back and forth a little bit is not a bad idea. A little work hardens it because that soldering process we just did um, annealed this. So, I'm going to bend this back out again. Come on, let's not act like a moron. And I'm just going to round it down kind of farish. Okay, now what I'm going to do is determine, I, this wire is going to stick in, here let me show you, so it's going to stick in here. So you want to have, see these are going to open and close like that, so you want to have a couple millimeters extra um, for fitting into that other side. So, you know, let's see. Cut it here. If you if you cut it too short, don't panic. You can just squeeze the tubing a little closer together. But you're gonna have to do it um, on the same side, on the other pair, other part part of the pair. Let's not cut the tubing at the same time. And um, I want to clean this curve up a little. It's still pretty funky looking. Um, and I'm also going to use my little ball burr and finish this end off because you don't want to put sharp unfinished wire into your ears. This is way too big. Let me find a poquito one. There we go. You can tell I've been taking Spanish classes. Muy importante. Vi vivo in California. Yay. <laughs> okay, so we got that rounded out. Now we can test our earring. I'm going to put a little tension on it by wiggling it. That's not quite right shape. Putts around. And there's your hoop earring. So, making two of them. <laughs> and you've got a pair and that took us what? Maybe five, maybe ten minutes. Maybe. So that's pretty quick. And it's soldered and everything. You could hang stuff off of this. You could solder things down on the bottom. You can make uh, little um, washers to run down in here and maybe solder them in place. Lots of different things you can do. Then you can flatten this too. If, but don't flatten the end where you're going to put the wire in. That won't work. So that's earring one. Okay, I'm going to get set up for earring two. So I'm just going to whip up some fancy wire here if you want to see uh, more info on how to make it to my video on fancy wire. So I've got one that's already kind of wrapped um, and I want to add a couple more wires to give this earring a little more heft. Um, the deal is, is you don't want to make the wire so heavy that the earrings are incredibly heavy, especially if you're going to hang doodahs off of them. This is the, um, got a new... Uh, jump ring maker because mine's shot and this is the which one is this Pe heavy jump ring maker JRM2 I just got once again I'm you know double dutying on a tool I'm not going to be making jump rings I'm going to be making the fancy wire without the drill also going to use the mandrel down the road to shape the ear wire piece so I'm using the glove because I'm a wuss Hurts your hands, so it curls in your fingers. So I'm just rolling this, rolling. Oh, wow, that one's wonky. Okay, that's good enough. So, take off my, God, look at all that pitch on there. Take off my glovey. I 
I got my wire. Now you can do these earrings two ways. You can leave them as is or you can pound the heck out of them like I did with this one. Um, it's up to you. You can even run this through the rolling mill beforehand. Anneal it though afterwards just to make it easier. Oh my god, I can't get this off. There we go. Have a panic attack and then fix it. That's my plan. Okay, now we got to get back to jump ring, not the jump ring maker, the ring bender. By the way, that jump ring set is awesome. It's so much stronger and more and well put together than the one I have. I, I love the cutter. It's like, wah! This is a womanly tool here. Very nice. It's a nice, nice set. Very happy with it. And uh, another another bit of Nancy, etc. This um, ring bender, soon after using it, probably 20, 30 bends, it got kind of stiff and wouldn't move. So I just dumped some uh, green one oil, and I am swinging and winging it like a pro. Oh, excuse me, the studio assistant needs to leave. Videographer, lady, person. <laughs> Can't irritate her because she starts screaming. Okay, so we're back in the vise. And um, I don't want to use the Delrin. And I want to use the big circle thing. So I slid in my matching component that's in steel. And it's just like the other time, other thing we were doing. I just start in the, mi the beginning and just start wiggling this thing around. I'm not trying to conform real tightly to the circle because I want to make these a little bigger. I tend to have to resize them. I should have done the other part first. almost done. You know, you can make these as, as big as you want. Just depends on how much wire. I, this is another great scrap project. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is not exactly round. I actually kind of like the oval. Um, what I'm going to do now is mark. Uh, mark. Mark! Where are you, Mark? I'm going to mark where I'm going to cut it. Um, this is rather funky here, so I'm going to cut it here and 10 millimeters over again, approximately. Let me see. Verify. 10. So, measure. Where's it? Where's my other mark? Somebody say this stuff was easy to do. I would like to have a word with them about that. So about 10 millimeters. We're not going to hold you to exact measurements here. So you can just go ahead and clip that. But then what you have to do, because this is rolled together wire, it needs to be soldered on the ends so it doesn't unravel. By the way, if you are making two earrings, you should make, it, make sure you have enough of this rolled out so that it's, it's the same, you know. And then this can be reshaped again by hand or with on a um, on a ring mandrel. Right now I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is, and I'm not going to go show you this, but I'm going to flood this with flux in here and I'm going to drop a piece of solder on the side here and a piece of solder over here and I'm going to pull the heat through so the solder runs through all the little wires. You can also give it a little extra twist with your pliers just to make sure everybody's nice and happy together like that make sure they're all together so I'm gonna go do that and then I will come back and show you the next part we're almost done <laughs> okay I've just flexed this how close can I get <laughs> I just flux the ends of this and I'm dropping a, a largish, largish piece of solder, uh, that's hard to say, largish piece, piece of solder on it. 
like so. And I told you I wasn't going to show you this, but I thought, oh man, oh man. So I'm going to start heating back here to keep the flux from bubbling the uh, solder pallion off. Start moving in for the kill. Okay, I want that to flow through. Come on. Get this side, and then I'm going to turn it over. Not with my fingers. I'm going to hit the side and bring, try to bring it up. And if you fuse the end a little bit, it's not a biggie. It's not actually a bad idea. The nice thing about using the argentium which this is not, um, is that it, um, it melts so beautifully. It fuses beautifully. It's just, it's just my favorite metal. I'm just so happy about it. So, I'm going to check this, make sure this little sucker got soldered on because it was a little open. Looks pretty good. You don't want them unraveling, so. There, see that gap there? It's not perfect, but... <sighs> It's a demo! Get your face. Poisonous gas. So when it's out of the pickle, um, we're going to clean up a little bit and then I'm going to show you how to put the uh, that part on. Okay. WW. Sit girl, sit. So while you were in the soldering room, you might have should have um, <laughs> balled up some 20 gauge wire. This is um, argentium. You need two pieces to make the, um, for each earring, the, get out of there, this part here. And I don't know, I, I kind of guessed at how long it is. So I can give you a num number on here. It's not going to end up this size. Uh, this is six centimeters. So, you know. Not that short, just you can eyeball it. After you make a couple of them, you'll get good at it. You'll be just so intuitive. So what I'm going to do here is clean this edge up a little bit um, with my uh, sanding discs. Um, you can use a file too, or sandpaper if you must. And um, I'm also going to file a flat spot on the top of the wire about... Uh, how about about five millimeters across here this way on both the tops okay so I'm gonna go get a sanding disc I'll be right back so I'm just flattening the end here just to clean it up a little bit and then um, I'm gonna switch to a big uh, cupper around these edges up a bit. Big. Bigger. Work. Just try not to keep things sharp. Sharp and skin doesn't always work. And I'll get this wide wad of wire that I should have crimped together better. Okay, good enough. I should leave that in. I'm supposed to leave something in those. So if you want to round up your earring a little more, do it at the end because um, we're going to be screwing around with it a little bit and it will misshape it. So you can take... I, I use my wolf belt sander for this because it's just so much easier. But you can take it and drag it down the file. Or you can put it on your bench pin, <laughs> theoretically. And what we're doing is filing a flat spot to attach the tubing to. There's one. Is our um, ear wire holder mechanism thingy. Yeah, got all out of shape. We, we'll fix that later. Okay, then we have a little um, tubing that the... Um, whoa, I that on the floor. 
you want the uh, 20 gauge wire to fit smoothly in here because we want it to be able to move inside. Um, so what I do is the wires, the tubing is, um, what is it? Yeah, it's going to fall on your foot and you're going to hate me forever. Um, it's a per, barely see. Looks like it's four millimeters, the, the tubing. So you could mark off here eight millimeters. Oh, give me this thing. Someone's going to die. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You can mark off eight or ten millimeters on here because um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to file a flat side on this tubing. So I don't want to file the whole tubing. Once again, I use the wolf belt sun for this too, but I'm not dragging it over here right now. This is unpleasant. That's why I cheat. But the nice thing about this is it does give a nice, even, flat surface. And I'm really pushing down on this tubing to keep it from rolling. You could um, clamp it or something. Well, kind of. Maybe clamp one end and file the middle. So now I've got a flat edge on there, which will give us more surface area to solder to this part um, of our earring. So you're going to match up the flat onto the flat on this part here. So next we need to do is we already determined that those were four millimeters long. So I'm going to mark off four millimeters on the tubing here like so, and I'm going to get my um, da, 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 my missing tool. Help. Oh, there it is. My tubing cutter. Put it back in there. Oh, look. Look who's riding Fred. <laughs> it's Wonder Woman. The Wonder Jeweler. So, um, for... Oh, butt shaft accident. <laughs> What I'm going to do is line up the mark I made here with the marks with the with the cutting uh, line on the on the tubing cutter. And then I don't have to measure the second one because um, I just push it all the way to the edge and that both of my cuts will be the same size. We are ready to go. I've got a little, uh, what is this stuff, Peppy Lube came with my set. Okay, Get the chair out of the way. I don't like to use this thing. I'm afraid it's going to bend my tubing. I'm actually thinking of taking it off. Let me figure that out. Okay. Now, usually at this point in time, I would have tweezers to pick that up. So that's going over there. And now we're going to cut our other four millimeter length. And it could be a little less, it could be a little more. It doesn't have to be exactly four millimeters. I didn't know what I was doing when I did it. It just kind of went, oh, that looks like a good size. Oh, there we go. If you're sawing this on a bench pin, I take my apron and kind of hold it, spread it out in front of me, maybe even tape it to my desk. You might even have a real debt bench with a sweep drawer in it. That would be nice. Um, then, by the way, this may be our last video in the studio. Maybe not. Maybe one more. We're moving. <gasps> God, I can't wait. Everything's broken. My exhaust fan broke. My sink broke. Pretty soon the floor is going to cave in. So I'm so excited. Anyway, um, so what we want to do now is go back into the soldering room and flux this. And where we filed is nice and clean. So we try and keep our, hopefully clean hands off of it and I'm going to sit these on here and um, solder them on so um, let's go do that so um, this is kind of a balancing act I have a little prop here this is just a thin piece of copper to lift this up a little bit and uh, you want to have flat uh, soldering area as possible so it doesn't roll around um, and Sometimes the flux acts as a, not as a glue, but as a attractant, and it'll help it stay. You want to make sure your flat edge is facing the flat edge on the earring. Flat edge on the tubing is facing the flat edge on the earring. I'm only doing one at a time because it's just, it just drives me crazy trying to do both at once because of the precariousness of the 
soldering joint. So I'm heating the rest of the piece up because there's a lot more metal here than there is down here on this little tiny tubing. I'm going to start moving over here. And I used a small solder pallion. Metal's starting to get pink. Once the solder flows, I want to try to run it down the side of the tubing. Notice how I keep lifting off if I see it get too red. And then, I miss my ventilation. It is definitely not good without it. I'm going to turn it over. Now you don't want to do that. You want to have some kind of support under here, otherwise the tubing could fall off. So you want to make sure it's still supported and just check to see if you can see solder on the back side. And if you can't, you can do two things. You can try bringing it up from this side. And keep your eye that you don't melt the other tip over there. If you don't see the solder coming up, then you might need to add another pallion. Anybody in here? Oh, for God's sakes. Where's the solder pallion when you need one? I just cut like 70 of these. Okay. There we go. This is why I ruin all my brushes. Stay. There we go. I've got this heat sink. This metal is acting as a heat sink, so we'll protect the tube a little better. Whole face full of gas. Okay, that looks good. A lot of soldering for a teeny little piece, huh? So, and then what I'm going to do is pickle it, and then I'm going to do the other side exactly the same way. Okay? Um, I'll briefly show you how I set it up, um, water spray bottle, charcoal, charcoal, barbecue. You gotta remember your charcoal becomes just like the stuff in your barbecue, so you want to quench it before you leave your studio at the end of the day. Little safety tip from NLTH. Those are not tweezers. Okay, we have no tweezers, so. Nope. Yes. All right, so what I did was I just basically made sure that this part was laying as flat as possible. So this is hot over here. I didn't really want to hang out there. So since see how it can go down. So I want to get a prop. I keep nickels and dimes and other soldering props in here to hold. See how that lifts that up. So now it'll be down here and I dip in the hole tube in the flux and then I'm going to roll it around with its flat edge against the um, God, it's the wire and these tubes are lined up with the end of that wire and at this point um, I'll go ahead and um, put a piece of solder over there like that so I'm going to do that but you've already seen it once so I'm not going to let you watch it again Hi. <laughs> Just messing around. Um, so I've kind of lost my round here. Um, I could go back into the Pepe ring bender thingy. Um, or I could use something like this. Just kind of, you can work it by hand. Or you can use your little mallet. Mallet. Careful you don't crush the tube on the end when you do that. Stuck, <laughs> Stuck on my apron. Um, and then usually I end up doing, having to do fine tuning with my half round pliers too. I want to bring this down so that these are kind of facing across from one another while still retaining my round. And then you want to check this way too so that they're lined up in front in front of each other so that looks pretty good so and then this part is the finale unless you want to add 
um, you know, doodahs to the bottom. Um, you can do jump rings. This is just a, a bent over link from a chain, um, uh, which I'll show you how to make, um, you know, in a simple stone on a, with a balled up end and a little hook. So you can do all kinds of different stuff. And like I said, you can hammer this. And So you want to put the um, wire that we've done before with the balled up end like that from the inside out. And I'm going to take one of my handy dandy uh, mandrels here. Which one was it I used? Try to be consistent. Remember, I think it was this one. Yeah. So... Let's see if I can do it this way so I can show you how. And I'm just going to bend the wire around the mandrel like that. And go past where you need to be. See how that is? See how that is? So at this point, I'm just going to kind of roll my finger down there and made it into a gentle slope. See? Oh. It's hard to hold like that. So then I want that wire to go almost all the way through the tubing or into the tubing. So I'm going to mark or I'm going to trim it on the outside. Give her a good clipperoo. And then this has to be um, hit with the um, cupper. Again, remember you don't want any pointy sharp objects going into your ears. Or maybe you do. Maybe that's what's wrong with America. <laughs> Been in here too long today. Okay. Just gonna ball up our end. La la la, da da da. And check it out. There you go. Now this could be just a, just a hair down. The cool thing is you can pull these apart or put them together. You know, you can wiggle it. And when you put these on and off, you're going to be opening it. And then you're going to be closing it. So it's going to eventually work harden. You can do it this way too. So don't worry if it's a little soft right now. Um, so there you go. Type 2 earring, we'll call this. Um, so those are some of the things I um, was playing with, with my Pepe ring bender and my little new uh, jump ring cutter. And I thought I would share with you because you are my favorite people in the world. Uh, one mommy kind of thing. I don't have a lot of time to look everywhere for, for messages. So I, I, if some of you have noticed, I'm really bad at responding Facebook, YouTube, um, pretty much anywhere else, my website. <laughs> but I do eventually get to all my emails at my, um, on my email. So um, I would recommend if you have a question for me to email me at nancy.lt.hamilton at gmail.com. And it may take me two months. I'm trying to get better. Uh, but I'll eventually get back to you. Um, and I'm also starting, I have a new page on my website called Questions and Answers. Um, that I'm just going to start posting some of the longer, more involved responses that I think are applicable for everyone there. So hopefully you can find a solution to your problem um, in that location. Um, and the newsletter's late again because I've been redecorating and Vegas and other horrible things. So I apologize to everyone for being a slug. It's just me and occasionally little Lisa. Oh, and of course, studio assistant. But I'm done. <laughs> I'll shut up now. Thanks for watching. Have fun. And make a lot of beautiful things.